An automatic traffic counter and classifier system is a data gathering device installed on roadways. The data can include daily traffic on particular road, vehicle classification, number of axles, speed, and vehicle cluster. The system is capable of obtaining large amounts of data at minimum operational cost and with no disruption to the traffic stream. It is capable of accurately counting and classifying traffic up to an accuracy of 95% so long as all the working principles are met. So how do you install an automatic traffic counter system? To install an automatic traffic recorder, it is critical to determine where on the road the device will be installed. Observing the driving pattern on selected road to ensure exact spacing of sensors is critical. It is also recommended that the device is installed at a place where the road is straight, with no interceptions, avoiding curves, or where drivers will make turning movements, basically find a free flowing road. Let's take a look at some safety working measures. For safety of persons working on the site, safety of installation material and for smooth flow of traffic without causing much disruption, there should be proper placing of road blocking barriers, advanced informatory signs of ongoing works and speed limits for the stretch should be placed at proper distance. Persons working on site should wear proper safety gears. The flagman should be at both ends of installation site. A first aid kit is mandatory at the installation site. Before starting the installation process, select the loop size and loop location on the tarmac road. Start marking according to the vehicle uh, path. We prefer to leave one and a half feet uh, from the edge of the road so that uh, wheels can pass properly. The general loop size measures six by six feet. Our loops are perfect square. Uh, every side of, uh, are of uh, six feet. The initial markings of the groove where the loop sensors will be installed is done by the use of white chalk. Now we are joining the vertices, as you can see, and uh, marking at every 12 feet because we have to uh, mark it as a diagonally. Now we are marking for the piezo sensor. There is a 48 inches uh, uh, distance between two loops. And in between that, we can place the piezo sensor anywhere where we want. Here we are going to place the piezo sensor uh, from three feet from here and one feet from, from that loop. Piezo sensor is also of six feet and it is the most important part of this electronics. Now the marking for this lane is also complete for the sensors. We are uh, joining all the grooves because all the sensor wire will pass through the same groove. Two wire from the first loop and two wires from the second loop and one wire from the pijo. Now you can see we are marking for the home run. We are going to join the grooves of first lane and the second lane. Where five wires of first lane and five wires of second lane will come together and pass through the same groove. The home run groove of the wires can be from any distance from the loop but it should be more than six inches. Now we are going to mark the final marking. We are marking the final groove in which all the uh, 10 wires from both the lanes will pass and come up to the cabinet. Then make it permanent by using a bright yellow road marking paint for better visibility. They are marking with yellow paint. We do yellow marking. It's a permanent marking. It is done uh, on the surface because it will not wash with the water and uh, the cutting machine operator uh, can see it while cutting the edges because uh, we uh, don't want to be the wire so stressed that it will cut automatically after weathering so uh, we bend it through the uh, edges 
Now you can see the uh, marking is finished. We actually mark according to the traffic flow. Uh, the traffic flow is in this direction. So this is the first loop of this lane and this is the second loop of this lane. Uh, every side of this loop is of 6 feet. Uh, so it is a perfect square and also uh, the uh, every side of this uh, loop is also of 6 feet and so it is a, uh, also a perfect square but we have marked at every 5 feet and joined these uh, markings because uh, uh, we don't want to uh, uh, don't the, uh, want that wire should be cut when there is weathering because in uh, while uh, weathering when uh, surface is hot it uh, expands when the surface is cold uh, during rain it contracts uh, during this uh, uh, expansion and co uh, contraction uh, wire also expands and contracts uh, and it may lead to uh, breaking of the wire that's why uh, we cut uh, to uh, reduce the tension at the edges we cut at every 5 feet uh, and join them now loop 1 and loop 2 creates magnetic field and this is the piezo sensor you can see uh, uh, this is also of the same uh, length it's uh, it is of 6 feet whenever any uh, wheel of the vehicle passes over it it creates a uh, wheel creates the pressure and this piezo sensor uh, senses that pressure and convert it into the uh, electrical uh, signal and that electrical signal goes up to the uh, ATCC electronics uh, from that loop two uh, wires will come and uh, goes from this groove and uh, this is the piezo sensor which is of also six feet uh, uh, length uh, the in length of this piezo sensor will end here and uh, up from here there is a wire connection from the piezo sensor and which will go through this uh, uh, groove and this loop also has uh, two wires and this uh, groove will accommodate five wires now it's uh, you can see it is going up to the atcc machine and from uh, five wires from that lane also uh, that five wires and this five wires uh, uh, means 10 wires will accommodate through that conduit and go up to the ATCC electronics using an RCC cutting machine make the cut through your marking and clean the groove regularly and measure to ensure you have the proper dimensions you can see cutting has started and operator is cutting uh, following the uh, yellow marking and uh, there are two blades of 3.2 mm and 3.2 mm these two blades uh, uh, together cut uh, 8 to 10 mm wide uh, groove you can see our uh, engineer is checking the depth the depth of the uh, groove should be 20 to 25 mm to accommodate three tons of wire which is of 4 mm width and after that we should power the filling material which should be uh, equivalent to the surface when you are measuring the depth insert the scale and put your finger up to the edge of the groove now you can check the groove is 30 mm when we are measuring the loop uh, on the downside of the road uh, the groove will be more because hair uh, machine uh, blade goes down due to slope when we um, measure on the upper side it will be uh, 5 mm less cut about 1 to 2 inches from the corners of the rectangle the loop sensor size should be 8 to 10 millimeters in width 20 to 25 millimeters in depth the falling water from the machine is very useful the, there should be continuity uh, in the uh, in running water because uh, it guides the operator while cutting piezo the operator uh, goes twice or sometimes twice or four times uh, to give proper width and proper depth but while cutting loop uh, the operator goes once only there is a T mark for the piezo sensor uh, but he will cut more than that to accommodate the lead portion operator will uh, cut along with this groove just adjacent to this groove to make it wider he is cutting just parallel to the first groove to make it wider it will be 16 to 18 mm wider but we need 20 mm wider so we will guide him to brush aside brush any of the side of the of this groove after he will finish this cutting while uh, 
is cutting for the video sensor you must guide the sitting just in front of the machine uh, guiding him to come straight and about his uh, deviation whether he, he is deviating or not he will follow your hand gesture this is a plastic piece which comes inside the piezo box uh, this is used to me measure the width of the piezo sensor cutting this portion of the plastic this is of 20 mm you can see i checked from the uh, first end uh, and up to here it is 20 mm from here you uh, you have to brush this side okay they will only cut one or two mm from this blade as soon as he finishes the width uh, my colleague will assist him uh, to make it deeper at both ends because uh, at both ends the piezo sensor is bit thicker so you can see uh, my colleague is adjusting the depth of the blade now he is uh, going deeper this depth is of uh, uh, any measurement between 30 to 40 mm i am again going to check it's 20 mm now the first lane, first loop, second loop and piezo cutting is finished. Now we are heading for the cutting of the uh, five wires of the first lane. We are going bit deeper here because we have to accommodate five wires. As soon as he finishes cutting this straight groove, the cutting for the first lane will be finished. Power wash and sweep groove then dry with compressed air. You can see we are cleaning the grooves because it must be clean of gravels and sand and uh, there must not be any dust inside it. If there is any dust, gravel, it may affect the wires which are laid inside the loops. We are cleaning it with hooks. It's a, a fabricated tool. It is used to uh, clean the grooves and uh, after uh, hooking the grooves, we clean it with compressed air using electric blower. Place duct tape along length of both sides of the groove otherwise known as the sensor slot. It's now time to lay the loop wire. I am going to measure the loop wire. It's uh, used for magnetic field. A 14 AWG. I have a spanner, a wire stripper and electric tape uh, these are used while uh, making loop this is uh, used to insert the loop wire inside the group this is used to cut the wire this is used for marking you can see i have twisted the wire to make uh, it identifiable or for the beginning of the loop now you can see i am inserting the wire the very first round with the help of this spanner Run the wire to and through the lead in slot to the corner of the loop. At every edges, we should push down the wire as much as possible. And the wire should be tight also because a loose wire does not create magnetic field. Now I am going for the second round. You can see the first round has started from here, but the second round is going from this loop. When the required number of turns is complete, Twist the wire to cancel the magnetic field. This is my second round, which I am continue. Now it's the third round. It will complete when I come up to the starting point. You can see I am inserting the wire at the corner as much as it is possible you need a helping hand while uh, making rounds because uh, one person should hold the wire wire bundle now the third round complete i have left the spanner inside i detangled the wire make it straight now i am going to twist both the wires you can twist it two three times here the magnetic field will be cancelled and doesn't go beyond this point. It will remain inside the loop. Remember 
The loop wires should not turn at 90 degrees. This would cause breakage of the wires, so try to cut the corners at 45 degrees. The process shall be repeated for all loops in all the lanes. When we go to at the traffic, the first loop, uh, the, uh, the loop that comes first is known as first loop and the loop that comes second is known as second loop. I have started from the second loop, now I am going to mark it as second and I also need a person's help who can stand over it so that I can mark. You can see I am going to stretch the wire up to its entire length, both sh uh, wires should be of the same length because these are the terminals of a loop. Then stretch the terminal wires from the first and second loop and ensure they are all of the same length. I am marking the first round. After that I will mark the second to mark it as second loop. The same procedure is repeated for the other loop. I am measuring the loop wire for the entire home run groove of the fourth loop. You can see I am measuring the loop wire for the fourth loop, not for the third loop. Because in the uh, direction of traffic flow, it's the second loop. So I am measuring the wire for the fourth loop. Ensure the sensors are placed exactly perpendicular to the flow of traffic and that all lanes are straight. It is now time to lay the piezo sensor. First, decoil the sensor. Rub it with the sandpaper until it's shiny. The copper uh, strip-like thing is a piezo sensor. It's six feet long. The lead attached to the sensor is of 100 feet. He is rubbing it with the sandpaper so that the f uh, upper layer should be shiny because there may be some uh, layer over it when it is packed for long duration. He will rub on the upper side and the down side as well. Then place insulation brackets at 6 inch apart. The piezo sensor is also known as pressure sensor. It senses the pressure created by the wheels. If any of the wheel passes over it, it counts it as one axle. You can see he is pushing the bracket inside. The brackets will be equivalent to the grooves edges but not over the surface. We need to insert the piezo cable first because it's a bit harder and it usually comes out again and again. The one mark from the red tape shows it's piezo number one, two marks shows it's the piezo number two. You can insert any of the loop cable after inserting the piezo cable. This is the junction point where all the five wires, the two wires of the first loop, two wires of the second loop and two wires of the first loop goes together. The very first wire of the piezo sensor of the loop sensor should be inserted properly so that it can accommodate uh, other wires. So you can see I am inserting it as much as possible so that we can insert the other wires. The first lane sensor is complete. Now prepare the epoxy which is used to fill the grooves. Team, uh, which is mixing epoxy and resin should wear gloves because it's a very sticky compound. First component is powder. Second component is a liquid which is used to mix the powder uh, in a well manner. Third component is hardener. The mixing should be start only when you are ensured that you are going to put it into the grooves because when you put the hardener inside it, it it sets very fast. When you fill epoxy compounds, 